Okay, in this video we're going to do something a little bit different from the previous video where we looked at trigonometric ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent. We're going to look at something called inverse trigonometric ratios, and you would write them this way, sine negative 1, theta, and that means any angle, right? Cosine negative 1, any angle, tangent negative 1, any angle. Now, this is basically just means the inverse, right? Um, when you raise something to the negative one, it's like putting it you know, like one over whatever this might be. So it's like one over sine. This is like one over cosine. This is like one over tangent. And basically, we use the inverse trig ratios to find the number of degrees of any angle. Okay? We use the regular trig ratios to find the lengths of the sides, but we use the inverse trig ratios to find the actual degrees. Okay? So it's just a little bit different. It's like reversing what we're using. Okay, now I'm also going to point out again, please memorize this word, soka toa, because it really does tell you uh, what each one of these functions means, or these ratios, so that we know that sine, S, is opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of some angle opposite over hypotenuse. C is cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, right? And tangent is opposite over adjacent, all right? So this is a really helpful little word to remember, and a lot of people use it well into their adulthoods, okay? Now let's take a quick look at this triangle as an example, and we'll, we'll get a, um, I'll show, demonstrate how this works. So here we have a right triangle. I know that because of this little box here indicating a 90 degree angle, but I want to find angle A, okay? I don't know what angle that is, but I do know that the hypotenuse is 12, and I know that one of the legs is 6. So let's do this. I know that the sine of angle A would be equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, right? So that would be equal to 6 over 12, right? And basically what that comes down to is I get that the sine of angle A is equal to 0.5. Now, I want you to watch something very carefully. This is how I would do it algebraically. This is step one. This would be step two. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my calculator and I'm going to, let me just turn this on and see if you can actually see what's going on there. I think you can see that, right? Yeah, there we go. Now I'm going to put in 0.5 and you'll see that right above the button that says sign, you'll see that sign to the negative one, that's the inverse sign, right? Now let's go ahead and put in the 0.5 because I know that and then you press second sign and that'll bring me up to the yellow ones here and most calculators do something very very similar so second sign and you get 30 so basically what happens is the inverse sign is equal to 30 degrees so I would put sine of A is 30 degrees Okay, and this is simply by pressing that inside inside here. Uh, you know what, actually, let me, let me redo this for just one second. <clears throat> if I really wanted to do this more correctly, I'm just going to cross this out. I'm going to multiply both sides by the inverse sign. Let me show you why. So I'm going to say inverse sign times sine A. will be equal to the inverse sine times 0.5, right? Now, algebraically, what this does is that this inverse cancels out the sine. So the inverse sine cancels out sine, and I'm left with, more accurately, angle A would be equal to the inverse sine of 0.5. Now, what I just did in here is actually exactly still the same, right? So I'll put in 0.5 one more time. And again, I hope you can see that. And then put the inverse sign, and you get 30. So step six, angle A is equal to 30 
degrees. And I know now that if angle A is 30 degrees, this is 90 degrees, I can figure out the third angle simply by using the, um, the uh, triangle sum theory. I know that's 120, there's 180, so this would actually be 60 degrees. Now I could have used uh, cosine, I could have used tangent as well. Let me just do one more example using the same values here, and just going to use one of these other functions to show you how it could have worked, okay? So now, let's use the cosine instead. So let's use the cosine of B, right, of angle B. So I'm going to say cosine B will be equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And again, notice that the adjacent here is 6. The hypotenuse is 12. So I'm going to go 6 over 12. That looks familiar, right? It looks a lot like the sign, but let me show you what it does. Let me just do my algebra. Whoops, that should be cosine. Cosine b is again equal to 0.5. Let me multiply bo both sides by the inverse. So I get cosine of 0.5. Remember that this eliminates this. It's like multiplying by the fraction, like 1 over 2 divided by 2 gives you 1. So it's the same idea here. And you get angle B is equal to, I'm just going to put the little angle sign there even though I didn't have to put it there, cosine, inverse cosine rather, of 0.5. Let's see if I get 60 now. So 0.5, I hope you can see that, yep. And I'm going to go to my inverse cosine, and sure enough, it shows up as 60, which is what we figured out here. So this turns out to be angle B is equal to 60. Okay, so what's the point of this? Basically, you can use any of these inverse functions, right, to find out any of the angles inside here given the proper information. You just have to determine which pieces of information fit best into these functions. Okay, I hope that was helpful to you.